So any business that spends money to acquire customer wants to make sure that the money that they spent to acquire that customer uh, is less than the money that the customer makes for them. Now as a data analyst, you might be asked to build a lifetime value model. And the reason they may, want to, uh, they may want you to build a lifetime value model is because they want to work out how much they should spend on a customer because they want to know how much that customer will make for them in the future. Now the thing about a customer lifetime value model, there isn't actually a single way or a right way to do it. There are multiple ways to do it. The easiest way to build a customer lifetime value model is literally to look at how much on average a customer makes for you, okay? And that is the, is, is the average lifetime of a customer. Before, we, uh, before you do that calculation, for some businesses, you need to also work out when the customer is still active with you. So, you know, if you have not worked out what your definition of a lapsed or inactive customer is, then that's the first thing you have to do. You have to work out at what point are they no longer a customer, they become, they've lapsed or they've become inactive and you have to then reacquire them uh, whether it's you know directly or even through your CRM channel to reactivate them you have to work that bit out because that's the window in which you consider your customer to be active or live with you and that's where the lifetime of your customer uh, is um, uh, sort of framed within so like I said the easiest way to do it is if you work out that your customers um, you know you, your, your lifetime value of your customers 12 months let's say you're a subscription business and you go lifetime of my customer is 12 months then you just work out what the average value of that customer is that's the easiest way to do it so you can say look the average value of that customer in terms of how much money they make for you not necessarily how much sales is let's say 100 pounds okay so the business decides you know what if the customer's making us 100 pounds on average uh, we can afford to spend 10 to 20 30 pounds right to to acquire them okay um, it all depends on what the business is and, and what the margins are but that's generally how you how you could do it as a very um, broad way of doing it now obviously you know what the problem with that is half the people don't make 100 pound and half make more than that and if you're going to lose someone who's uh, going to make you more than 100 pound how much do you invest to get them back and if someone's going to make less than 100 pound how much do you invest so you can't really use the average but if, if the business has given you literally no time to build a lifetime value model and they just need something quick then that's one way you could do it if you want to get a bit more sophisticated with lifetime value models you might want to look at cohorts now these cohorts can be anything anything from time-based cohorts so people are coming january february march etc or channel-based cohorts so the marketing channel used to drive those customers uh, to, to to acquire um, so the acquisition channel marketing acquisition channel so did they come from paid search did they come from display did they come from facebook did they come from twitter whatever channel they came from you can then cohort them and see how much they make for you on average and that they can be your and and that can be um you can have different sorry you can have then different uh, lifetime values depending on what channel they came from and if you wanted to be a bit more uh, sophisticated with that you, you can also then do it across campaigns so you could say the the lifetime value of people who come from this campaign um you know is this okay by by the channel of course okay so so that's one way you can do it where you get a bit more sophisticated because then you can say look people we acquire through paid search uh, deliver us more revenue uh, um, they have more sorry they have a higher lifetime value you than people who come from uh, you know Facebook okay and that means you might want to invest a bit more in paid search and, and not so much in Facebook there are also machine learning techniques that you can use uh, to create lifetime values and that's where you sort of uh, create segments or, or cohorts of individuals um, which are really small and in fact they could be at the individual level so you could give each person an individual lifetime value but typically it is usually at a smaller group level and what you do is you don't just look at let's say channel and a campaign you might look at what time of the day you might look at if they've got an account, you know, what details you can get from their account, their postcode, their age, their gender, what, what information you have about them. You might look at what keyword they came through or what, you know, like I said, campaign uh, and creative they came through. You might also just decide that what pages they land on. You know, people who land on this page, are they worth more than other pages? Now, obviously doing those grouping manually is quite hard. So you might want to use some kind of machine learning uh, technique to group the people and then predict their lifetime value, okay? Because um, again, with predicting lifetime value, you already need historical data um, and then you map it onto um, sort of new data. Um, so you say campaigns like this generated or campaign, people who came from these kind of campaigns, from these channels, this time of the day, landing on these home pages typically generated this much uh, revenue for us uh, across their lifetime therefore uh, you know uh, we, we can assume these people coming through now are going to be worth this much in 12 months time or whatever your active period is but the idea is that you're trying to predict at, at least at a gr smaller group level if not an individual level um, the lifetime of an, uh, a, a smaller group of people so therefore you can make more tactical decisions and um, how much you spend not only in acquiring them but also retaining them so if you feel that there's certain people who 
will give you more higher lifetime value then and they're going to lapse or they're going to churn um, then you may want to uh, incentivize them to stay by offering them a higher uh, a value uh, retention uh, offer uh, whatever that may be it could be a discount it could be a, a gift it can be a reward whatever you decide it's going to be that's essentially a, a lifetime value model essentially what you're trying to do is trying to work out at the most granular level ideally individual but if not at least at a cohort or group or segment level the lifetime value of that individual and usually like I said it's usually a value that they will generate within your active period so you have to decide what your active period is and that is your lifetime and then see how much uh, they, they deliver uh, how much uh, that group individual cohort segment delivers for you in that lifetime value thank you for watching my video I hope that explained what lifetime value is like I said there's no right or wrong way of doing lifetime value you've got to use the approach that works best for your business so really understand what your business wants to achieve um, and why they want you to build a lifetime value model and therefore build a model based on that please do um, subscribe to my channel like this video and if you have any comments please put them in the comment sections below